This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and we're going to show you the new features that were added in the Barnes & Noble Nook 1.3 update that was added April 23rd, 2010. It's a pretty big update. The first two that they released were incremental bug fixes, speeding things up a bit, and here they're adding some of the new features that they spoke about when they first released the product. Now we're just looking at the default home screen. Of course you can put any picture you want. That's not new. That happens to be my cat. Those of you who have used the Nook or looked at it know that there used to just be a row of five icons here. With the 1.3 update, we've gotten a whole bunch more. As you can see, new are games, Wi-Fi for better Wi-Fi management. That becomes important because there's now a web browser that works with Wi-Fi. You can't use it over 3G. Audio has a dedicated tab right now, and here's the beta web browser, and of course the old settings was there before. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is games. Two popular ones here. We have Sudoku and chess. So far I'm pretty impressed with the way they've done the user interface where you do input here and of course see things up here without creating a kind of mental disconnect. So if you're looking at the puzzle you can scroll through. Now we're, you can see it's matching over here and say I want to put in a number over there. I just tap and tap the number that I want. If I go here, you can see that there's hints and you can even make notes, which is pretty cool. And you can choose through several difficulty levels for Sudoku puzzles also. As you can see here, easy, medium, hard, and extreme. And chess. Of course you play against the nook here by default, and you can control the chessboard. And it works much the same way here, where you're seeing a replication down here that you can actually interact with. And then you've got little bubble hints, which is kind of a trademark thing for the Nook. They, they like to give you little status updates and hints about new periodicals and stuff using these little bubbles. So that's pretty cool. And this is the menu symbol here. So you can get to menu items, and we'll see that same menu function in the web browser. So we're going to go to the Wi-Fi tab, which is actually fairly informative. You don't kind of go, ooh, I turned Wi-Fi on, what the heck is going on anymore? It always remembers the Barnes & Noble hotspot settings, and it automatically reconnects to our home hotspot because we've set that one up. So you get a nice big status over here. And we are connected, so we're going to take a look at the web browser. Now this is actually a pretty impressive web browser because it's an Android WebKit based web browser. It's a lot more impressive looking than the, the Kindle's text based web browser, for example. And here it's loading a fairly complicated page, which is our own discussion forum, complete with ads. So as you can see, that's as visually sophisticated as it would be on an Android smartphone up here. And you have a color replicant down here. And So if you want to interact with the page or scroll the master page here, you do it using the little color version down here. Given how short this strip is, then they know that you're really not going to want to spend all your time probably staring at a web page down here. You're going to want to do most of your reading up here. So here we are now looking at our forum, which is a pretty complex and heavy page for this guy to be working on. And we're going to take a look at it following some links, which we'll do by scrolling down here. We'll just go to a Another page via the menu. And there you have it. Large and complex pages can take longer to load. Simpler pages obviously are going to load quite quickly. There's a menu button over here. You can use the go to. So you can see how you go to a web page. You can choose go at home, search, web page. And there you have the typical text base input for the Nook. You can star a favorite, you can go back, you can go forward. And here we have settings. So you can hide the toolbar automatically, hide the panning indicator, set your home page, clear your cookies, clear history, and all that kind of stuff. So it's actually fairly well done given the possible awkwardness of having all input happening here versus what you're reading over here. 
So for those of you who are dying to hit the Wikipedia when you're reading a book, now you can do it. Other features include faster page turns. We wouldn't say that books open any more quickly, but the page turns indeed are faster. Also, this is more responsive and wakes up more easily. I know I had problems sometimes with it. Not always waking up right away. So we'll take a look at the page turns. That's pretty quick. This is an EPUB document that I'm looking at. Go to is about the same as it was before. For this reading point, cover, and chapter, there is still no go to page number. Gosh, when are they going to add that very basic feature? Other improvements include larger arrow controls here for when you're scrolling through something. So cover view loads at about the same speed that it did before. It could be a little bit quicker, honestly. When you're done with the cover view, you can see how large these buttons are over here. This has become easier to control. Barnes & Noble has also finally enabled a feature where you can take this guy into a Barnes & Noble store, turn on Wi-Fi, and you can read any book or magazine that's available in the ebook store as long as you want. Just the same way that you go into the store and you pick up a book and you keep reading for as long as you feel like until you walk out of the store. So those are the Nook 1.3 updates in a nutshell. They're, they're pretty big, pretty competitive against the Amazon Kindle, and I'm sure they're also thinking about competing with Alex, which we'll be reviewing shortly, too. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website to read the full review of the Nook and many other ebook readers.